You care about her. She's a priority. So it's a personal relationship based upon understanding your needs. I need to hear what your needs are to understand them because you're unique. I care about you. And I respect that based upon my caring and my understanding. You're a priority and I respect your wishes, your needs. We are here for you. You give that message and women go, oh, I feel safe. I feel safe. And then the oxytocin goes up, allows the estrogen to go higher. And you're the person they can now trust and accept. You know, somebody can say, oh, but they did this and this and this. But that's OK. They did this, which is I want. <laughs> and, and they will then appreciate. They will appreciate you more. So coming back to women not feeling appreciated, let me tell a little story there because it was the first awareness of gender differences for me and it was in the workplace. Welcome back to another edition here on Mentory TV. I'm Patricia Falco Becali, your host. And well, I'm welcoming back today Dr. John Gray, simply because... I find his work amazing. I find him as a person, as a man, amazing. And I think so many people uh, have read his book, which came out over 20 years ago, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. And last time I had him on the show, we talked about his latest book, Beyond Mars and Venus. He also has online courses together with his daughter, just new one launched, understanding men. It's only for women, ladies. So that's another one. John, welcome to Mentory TV. And so good. I'm so happy to be back. So happy to be back. Excellent. Because we're going to have to do a little bit more of this because you do your, your video and your message is doing so well also on Mentory TV, apart from all the other channels you are on. And that just shows the hunger from both sides, I think, for men and women to try to really understand each other or uh, find out why, you know, some misunderstandings come up over and over and over again. And I think you are my guru and I'm, I'm quite sure that you are the guru of many other people. But today I thought we should drill down a little bit more into Mars and Venus at the workplace. You've uh, also written a book about that. And I think there is a lot to kind of encapsulate in the concept of uh, gender equality, um, um, diversity. And the concept is one thing. The reality, what men and women find at the workplace might be totally different. So first of all, enlighten us a little bit about um, how, if at all, there is any kind of difference between how men and women relate to each other in a working environment rather than in a private environment? Well, we, we've done surveys and the businesses where we teach these ideas. And one survey, over 200,000 people took it. And you have to look at the results. And what you'll see is uh, a majority of women feel that they're unappreciated by men in the workplace. And a minority of men feel... <laughs> that women don't appreciate them. Okay, so that's a huge distinction. I mean, uh, you go to work to feel your dignity. You want to feel valued. You want to feel appreciated. You want to feel that you're being respected. And yet a huge number of women don't feel that. And so that's, I'm just giving you the reports. Okay, so why would that be? Ironically, that's one of the favorite things I, I talk about, although the other differences as well. Uh, I wasn't even talking about gender differences 30, 35 years ago. I was a marriage counselor, just counseling, doing normal counseling stuff, more about healing the heart and finding forgiveness and those things, which is very, very important. It's part of my message even today, emotional intelligence, learning how to transform your negative feelings without depending on someone outside of you to change. I mean, just think if you could do that. That's like the big lesson of life, which is, hey, I'm upset I'm not going to change the outer world. First, I have to change how I feel and come back to a place of love. And when you have a place of love, you have a place of wisdom, you have strategy, you have logic, you have consideration, compassion, the right tone of voice. All those things are required to change the outer world. Anger doesn't do it. Resistance doesn't do it. Mistrust doesn't do it. That's just resisting. You just get more of it. So emotional intelligence is very, very potent. We might do a show on that. It's a big subject, and I do it very differently than all the books. Um, <laughs> I'm all for anybody who says we need to be emotionally intelligent, but we're still just identifying things rather than how to fix it and within yourself as opposed to trying to change other people. And if I so, may interject there, John, so let's define, let's start exactly with this pertinent point, emotional intelligence. What does it really mean? 
Well, to be emotionally intelligent means to be rather than be emotional. That's what a lot of people think. Oh, you're just suppressing your emotions. You're not in touch with your feelings. You should be more in touch with your feelings. You should share your feelings. Matter of fact, in the workplace, you should never share negative feelings. <laughs> you know, it often see there's a, a perplexing situation today. We don't have role models of women in the workplace that go back hundreds of years. Okay, it takes a while to figure these things out. How to adjust. And, you know, that we didn't have as far as home relationships. If you change the dynamic of uh, women being in charge of the home and the children, men being in charge of providing, once you change that, which is that worked out for a lot of people for thousands of years, it sort of evolved. And suddenly in, in one century, we want to up, uproot that. And, and suddenly, how do you do that? Well, that's what we talked about last time in Beyond Mars and Venus is women are more on their male side, men are more on their female side. Mm. So then in the 60s, as women were going into the workplace, the workplace is not designed for women. It was designed, it was a culture that was designed to promote the male hormones. And that keeps men, <clears throat> their stress levels lower. That keeps men more heartfelt to whatever extent they could be. And if women were in the workplace at the same time, they're producing male hormones. They're not making the female hormones that allow a woman's heart to be fully open and stress-free. But now we have this new situation where women in the workplace, how do you produce female hormones in a workplace that's not de de designed for you? So women had a lot of complaints. They felt like they had to push themselves in. They have to change the whole thing. And for women to thrive there, it does need to change without a doubt. But it doesn't change by pushing against, maybe a little bit. <laughs> but, but every time you push, it pushes back. Okay, you push, it pushes back. So I remember about 20, 20 years ago, there was a big study done in Europe uh, that women's stress levels, you can measure stress levels. You know, we're going back to biology again instead of just ideology, okay, biology. Women's stress levels in the workplace on average, it's not every woman, okay, but this is on average, were twice as high as men's. Great evidence that the workplace is biased against women. Well, actually, the workplace isn't biased against women. Workplace is just designed for men. The whole idea of don't complain, don't whine, selflessness, if you, you do better, you get paid more, it's a you know it's based on your merit you get more if you don't you get fired it seems so heartless but actually uh, having to prove yourself produces male hormones that actually motivates men and keeps their stress levels low for women not having to face that that just causes more stress so the research came out to say women's stress levels are twice as high in the workplace understandably and when they came home whether they were married or not their stress levels doubled again and men's went down. OK, so, yeah, men have had an easier time. <laughs> no, absolutely. And women are doubly stressed. And of course, trying to balance it all is like the third stress on top of it. So you balance yep. work, you try to kind of survive at home and then have the whole thing. But I, I mean, think let me, let me give you a taste of what it's like to be a man. OK, when I was single, I went to work and, <laughs> and did my job. I came home and relaxed and didn't care if my apartment was messy. Now, some men, their personality is they're like, everything has to be clean. But a lot of men, it's just kind of like, no need to clean up anything. There's dishes in the sink, and you know. And then when I bring a date home, I clean it all up before she gets there. So that she's so disappointed later to marry me. <laughs> I'm not that neat. Okay, so that's not a, all men aren't that way. But for a lot of men, we have this gene, which shows up in the workplace as well, which is never do anything you don't have to do. Now, women don't have that gene, and that's just a playful way of looking at it. It's called the efficiency gene. And what we what we have is a, not really a gene, but it's a, the, the left uh, anterior parietal lobe on the left brain, and every man is bigger than his right side. Mm -hmm. And that's the mechanical part of the brain. So if you're fixing a computer part. or an engine or whatever, and that has to be efficiency, you know, how to get it to work the most efficient way. Whereas the other side of the brain, and every woman, every woman born, it, no matter what you think you are, in your brain, the right anterior part of your brain, right anterior probe, uh, is bigger than your left. Now, that doesn't mean you can't use your left. And for a man, it doesn't mean he can't use his right. The right would be uh, things that have to do with relationships, nurturing, uh, um, food, uh, children, uh, creativity, beauty, you know, all of those things. And, you know, on the left, you got the <laughs> left brain, not on the left, but the left brain, you've got 
efficiency, practicality, logic, independence, self-sufficiency, you know, all. So those are parts of our brain that get lit up when we're doing those activities. Now, then our culture might encourage us to be on one side or the other. And then our personality. See, there's this thing called personality. And I think this is kind of helpful for people to understand that biologically, you're a man, biologically, you're a woman, and certain things rule your hormones to have well-being. And then there's personality. You know, personality can be masculine qualities or feminine qualities. But if your personality as a woman is naturally more on your masculine side, it's even for those women, it's harder for them to actually produce the female hormones that will raise their stress, that will lower their stress. Because biologically, as we reviewed in great detail for women, female hormones, the major one being estrogen, estrogen needs to be 10 times higher than a man in order for her to be stress-free. The workplace is not producing much estrogen. You know, workplace is primarily producing testosterone. So that means women can't ever go and, and testosterone lowers men's stress. Men need 10 to 20 times more testosterone to feel good. <laughs> so, so we have this biological imperative and yet we have our personality or some conditioning from childhood. You know, I had a lot of uh, four older brothers that were kind of brutal uh, to me. So I, I definitely didn't try to compete with them. So I developed more of my feminine side, so to speak, which is why I can understand women so well. I've written all these books. I have a, a natural tendency towards that. But I had to find my power as a man to write books, to achieve goals, to take risks, to get out there, to have a job, to do what I say I'm going to do. These are our masculine side. Uh, that took uh, extra effort for me. Okay, so then, but I learned I had to do that. Otherwise, I was addicted to just when men go too far to their female side, they have an addiction. That means you're too dependent on things. When women are too dependent, it's addiction, but feeling dependent on someone for something, your garden, your children, your doctor, your husband, your health, God, all those things produce estrogen. And that's good for men as long as men have more testosterone. And for women, testosterone is good for women as long as they have more estrogen. <laughs> so it's a so question really about balance here. Yes. And the when, interesting, sorry, go ahead. Go right ahead. No, no, no. But um, John, I think this is the, this is where the emotional intelligence comes in to the play. So knowing basically what makes a man happy in a workplace, which is get things done, be efficient. It is profit over purpose. Maybe, yes. and I'm generalizing, generalizing now. And for Profit women, it's... I've never heard that one before. But a lot of men, I would, I would like to comment on that. So I've never heard that before. Profit is the goal. The purpose is to provide for a woman. Now, my men don't know that. Okay, so that's clear. Okay, and that's why they're wandering around still. Nobody's pointed out that you will feel best when you achieve a goal and you share that with someone you care about as a priority. And so historically, that was called marriage. And you, you couldn't indulge as a man, you couldn't indulge. This is very old fashioned sounding, but I'll, I'm talking about the past here. Yeah. You could indulge in the most addictive thing a man could ever experience, which is sex. You couldn't indulge in sex until you had become mature enough to realize I can achieve enough for a woman to embrace me and want to have sex with me. And the culture said you should be married. And that's what marriage was about. I mean, I went through a huge thing as a teenager, not knowing this stuff, thinking, how can a piece of paper make any difference whether sex is good or not? And the reality is the piece of paper is just an acknowledgement that you have a commitment, that you love, and that you are loved. Those two things will raise both estrogen and testosterone. If you don't have enough testosterone and you're a male, it's very easy. See, testosterone, I've got to do this. But let's say I didn't have a father who showed me how to do this. It's so easy. I become afraid. Okay, I can't. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know how to do this. I haven't seen someone do this. So it's very easy for men when they're feeling fear is to go over to their female side and depend on somebody else too much and not themselves. So what's happening is, is estrogen levels are rising when you're depending on someone. Like when you go see the doctor, your estrogen goes up. Maybe that's why doctors can be so helpful for some people. <laughs> no, no, but but as you were saying also, um, uh, last time we spoke, John, was, you know, when men are angry, it's actually the estrogen driving them. Yes. And it's producing yes. even more estrogen because the aggressive hormone within us humans is estrogen. It's not just it's estrogen. It's complete estrogen. That's why mama bears are yes. the most aggressive, okay? But get that estrogen. So the, the for... for regardless, you can have positive, whenever you have any emotion, any emotion is estrogen being produced in your body. 
So if you're having estrogen go up really high and your testosterone is not higher as a man, you will feel, you will experience the cortisol response. Now look at what we label the cortisol response, fight or flight, anger or fear. I mean, it's like right there, our, our biology is telling us. And so most men th think being angry and aggressive is very masculine quality. Assertiveness, assertiveness is our male side. Assertive women are on their male side. Often they, they're labeled why can't women uh, assert themselves in the workplace? It's a little different because when a woman is, is, is asserting herself, quite often she's pushing down her feminine hormones. And that's why men have a hard time with it. You can, If you can assert yourself with your heart open, which would be more trusting and, and more accepting and, and more appreciative, these are the things that bump up a man's testosterone. So it's the art of asserting yourself in the workplace without feeling, I have to push you down. I have to make you wrong as opposed to, all right, I can hear what you're saying. I'm being a woman for a moment. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. You're saying logically this, this, and this, and I get it, I get it. It's I, just, I have a different point of view and have a different experience. So take a moment to listen to what I have to say and tell me what you think, okay? So suddenly you don't push against the person and, and a secret in the workplace for women to know is that there's a, three magic phrases. There could be others, but I wanna give the long list. <clears throat> Whenever you have something you wanna assert, and often women don't feel comfortable asserting themselves in our research and whatever is they, they, they want to be nice. You know, the, the uh, personality scale, if you're on the female side, is niceness and, and, and being considerate of others. See, that's nurturing. I don't want to push you down. But it, so you have this conflict inside of a woman if she wants to assert herself. Men don't have that conflict. OK, they, they don't need to. If they push down their female, it doesn't have a stress response for them. If Quite I the opposite, them, maybe. <laughs> they conquer something, you know. It actually, their testosterone goes up. Now, I won't say there is a, there's just a caveat. Everything I say has a yes, but. I mean, life is paradoxical. There's always a yes, but what else? Uh, an example of that would be uh, in Men Are From Mars, I wrote about how women need to talk. Well, not all women come home needing to talk. Why? Because they grew up in a family where if you talked, you were made wrong. If you shared emotions, you were made wrong. Or you're married to a man who doesn't understand women. And so if you get upset about something, you just calm down, don't relax, forget it. Let's watch TV. You know, <laughs> these things don't work at all, but nobody's taught him. Women need to talk more and then they'll feel open. But if she hasn't had the chance to experience that, she doesn't even know the benefit of that. So naturally she's not going to go, gee, I want to talk with my husband. It's just a downer. And then what happens when she doesn't express her female side through sharing, see opening up is your female side. When I'm talking with you, I'm opening up, I'm sharing, see, and somebody's penetrating. The masculine is listening, the feminine is opening up. But when the woman doesn't open up, men want connection too. So what we end up doing, who aren't trained to be men, is we start talking. And now she's got even two things to resist. She doesn't feel safe opening up. And she also wants to, I don't want to listen to that. <laughs> Yeah, because exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that, that is absolutely fundamental, I think, because this is the kind of conundrum. And there's a couple of things that spring to my mind. First of all, the very first phrase, what you said about women not feeling appreciated at the workplace. On the other hand, as I understand, and we'll get into it after you tell us the three magic uh, uh, lines Crazy. for for, yes. for women in the workplace, is also, okay, I don't feel appreciated. Still as a woman, emotionally intelligent woman, knowing about these hormones, balances, imbalances, I still have to make you from zero to hero, all right? Because oh, like only that like yeah. that, right? Yeah. Only yeah. like that, I get you as an assertive woman where I, where you are open enough to listen to me or even just see me as an equal and we can discuss constructively in the workplace about the issue as two people working yes, at that yes. place, and then finding a resolve. So it kind of seems counterintuitive, and it is the woman that needs to kind of understand that, uh, all right, this guy, they are profit over purpose, I am purpose over profit, but I still have not to push back, but use my inclusiveness, make him the hero of the moment, and only then we can start maybe working an issue out. Do I get that right? Absolutely. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. The, the three magic words, so everyone can take a note on it. Just try it out. You'll just see. <laughs> it was so practical. Okay. A man's talking and you want to disagree or you want to say we should do it this way or I have a different point of view or let's get to the point. Whatever you want to come back with, pause for a moment. If you're not feeling that that 
immediate respect and appreciation and equality, so forth. If you're not feeling that, if you have any apprehension at all, first of all, knowing that if you have apprehension about a man, you're already punching him in the stomach. See, one of the, the major testosterone producers in men is trust. See, when you're trusting a man, uh, his testosterone goes up. We can smell it in the air. Actually, we can. There's actually hormonal, you know, energetically, we're exchanging things. They now measure that when your heart's open, your energy goes out 35 feet. It can be measured. And when you're not feeling safe, your, your heart contracts, your energy doesn't go out. So we, we have influence as people, whether we wear it, know it or not. And then we have smells, pheromones. When a woman's estrogen levels go high, it's usually, it's always when they go really high, it's because she feels I can depend on someone. I can trust you. I can open up to you. So when her pheromones go up, they've measured this. A biological, just high fer estrogen goes up in a woman. She produces pheromones. It raises a man's testosterone levels. We have little nose inside of the nose in here, <clears throat> two little flaps in our nose to, to detect pheromones. It's not just a sexual thing. It's feeling testosterone goes up. Testosterone goes up in a, <clears throat> in a sexual relationship. That's great. But testosterone goes up in the workplace. It's not necessarily sexual. It's how can I help you? How can I help you? I want to provide for you. I want to be the good guy that you think I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're thinking I'm not a good guy, there's nothing to live up to. Mm -hmm. So... The three words, I want to get that out and then come back to another thing you said, but it's three words, three sentences. It's, okay, uh, so what you're saying, a little bit of what you're saying, without being rejecting of it, and that makes sense. I get it. Okay, whenever you can say to a man, even in the buildup to where you want to give your separate idea, well, that makes sense. Or uh, I see you're wanting, to, well, that's a good idea. I get that. See, a good idea doesn't mean we can't have a better idea. Okay, that makes sense doesn't mean I don't make sense if I disagree. But you can always, always, I used to play a game with my wife. We'd watch politics and I have strong political values that go back and forth and I'm more of an independent. And she's, uh, well, what do you, and when I'd be upset with somebody on TV that, that she would say, well, what's the logic about what makes sense about his message? <laughs> she like testing me and to prove me wrong. And we, we laugh about it because I look, if I believe this and this and this, that's my foundation, then everything I say is logical. It's just, I don't agree with them on the foundation of this and this and this, and therefore I disagree with them. But I can always say, if if if, if you believe this and this, then to say that, it's a logical thing. So logic is what builds men's testosterone, okay? Detachment is what builds men's testosterone. Uh, to be, you know, we talked about anger a minute ago. Uh, to be emotional, well, to be not emotional is testosterone. When you're not, when you have high testosterone, it doesn't mean you can't have estrogen as well. See, that's to be detached while you're feeling empathy for someone. That's what we, that's the power that I have as a therapist. I, I, I don't get beat up by my clients' problems at all. You know, I'm not engaged in trying to change them. So many therapists burn out. <laughs> I just love therapy. Because uh, basically I can be on my male and female side. I can be totally detached, not trying to change them in any way. You see, detachment says I don't have to change you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And emotions are telling you, you should hear me. You should do something for me. They're the cries for help. It's the limbic system of our brain is the emotional part of the brain, which isn't really the prefrontal cortex. Mm -hmm. but the limbic system of the brain basically doesn't think as much. It just goes, I want something. I'm not getting it. Kind of like a child throwing a tantrum. And uh, this ha this was painful before, so I'm afraid now. And so the words are, that makes sense. So that's a good idea. And you're right. That doesn't mean you agree with someone. It, you're, that makes sense. That's a good idea. You're right. And occasionally, zero to hero would be great. Which is, you're my hero. <laughs> Hooray. You yep, fixed yep. it. You did it. Oh, you've arrived. He's here. You know, any of those things in the workplace actually brings your feminine energy into the workplace. And the fear that many women have, particularly when they don't understand men, the fear is if I build him up, yep. he'll put me down. But if you look at the woman who loves a man the most, when he wants to commit to her, he kneels before her. He respects you more if you feed him what he needs, the fertilizer he needs to give you what you need is to feel he needs to feel appreciated. See, he did something, I'm not perfect, and you still can trust me. See, these are dynamics, hard to, how to give those messages to them. Well, that makes sense, that's a good idea. <laughs> oh, uh, tell me more about that. 
But now we're moving more to the female side. So if I'm a man in the workplace, I need to understand women's hormones. Any man that can give women a little hormonal relief in the workplace is a wonderful guy to work with. And she'll think you're her hero. He'll, she'll be glad to be working with you if you follow a few basic ideas. I gave three for women with men, mm -hmm. three for mm -hmm. men with women is when she's talking, help me understand that better. Uh, the magic words, tell me more. And well, what else? See, it only takes two to three minutes more. And I know a lot of men, they're afraid if I show interest, it's going to go on and on and on because that has been their experience. But that's because... When she shared one thing, he's going to go, yes, but, or he's going to finish your sentence, or she feels you're trying to rush her. So if you're trying to rush her or make her wrong, rather than validate her, you're pushing at her, she'll have more to say. And so we have this misinterpretation of women, just as women have a misinterpretation of men. But they're all, there's always these yes, buts, okay? And there's, there's the argument against building a man up. It can also be disastrous. Let me tell you how it can be disastrous. Is This is what women will sometimes do. They go, oh, I have a, a glitch in my computer, and I know you know about this, and you know so much more than me. So now they're trying to get him. It's manipulation to help her by building him up. It's not really sincere. Mm. Or maybe it is sincere. It doesn't matter. She builds him up. And then after he gives his solution, then she says, this is a poor communication skill. She says, oh, no, no, that doesn't work at all. And now she's disagreeing with this expert she built on the, the mountain on high. Oh, you're so amazing. Oh, but that can't work. But that didn't work. But I've already tried that. And this is not. So you've just basically put him way up. And kicking, him. Yeah, where it hurts more. Oh, okay. You push okay, him yeah. you, like you know better. So how do you do that? So you learn to, you always can acknowledge and appreciate people as you sincerely feel. You built him up. And that's why you're going to him for help. So lucky you're here. You're fixing this. I know you fixed this before. I'm really happy you're here. Okay. And then you realize everything he says is wrong because you know better or everything he says you've already done and there, therefore he's wrong. You don't want to build somebody up and make them wrong. Okay. No, you, no. But that, that shows then the difference about being sincere or being manipulative, John. I think, true, you know, true. if, if but, and yeah. that's a subtlety, that's a subtlety, but here's the communication skill that is very helpful. If you say to him when he says something that you're not going to benefit from or not going to do, then you use another magic phrase. That's so interesting. I hadn't thought of that. And that will be helpful for me to make my final decision. See, that's so interesting to me. <laughs> I hadn't thought that's of that. Clever. That's you are so clever. <laughs> <laughs> no, cleverness just comes from how to speak from an open heart but usually when people's heart is open they naturally say these kind of things but yeah. in the workplace hard for women's heart to be open it's just it's a it's a it's a fight or flight situation if you don't perform you don't get and that produces testosterone and now we have a lot of people going oh it's too harsh and everybody should get paid the same no <laughs> if everybody gets paid the same that's called that's called communism and we've seen every time in communism that's what a lot of people think is equality. That's not equality. It's getting paid the same. <laughs> so in communism, all motivation for creativity and change goes down and tyranny takes over. We've seen Absolutely. it all. And over I and think over. equality still needs to be qualified within meritocracy. So just because yes, I'm a yes, woman yes. does not mean I'm going to earn Mars. the same. Yeah. Meritocracy <laughs> is Mars. It's for our male side and for a woman's male side. It feels good for a woman to accomplish and achieve and get result get results based upon what she's accomplished. That's her male side. All I'm pointing out is that that won't feel so great if she's not also getting the nurturing and support of her female side and she's not giving it to herself, Okay, which is quality time for herself. Mm -hmm. We have another class at MarsVenus.com, which is called How to Get Your Me Time. Okay, which is, And this is particularly relevant for women who... Are, you know, they're working all day and then they come home and they're in a relationship. How do they with already women's stress levels are four times higher when they're than men at and they're home? How do you shift gears from being in a stress state? And for a woman in a stress state, she's always I have to do I have to do I have to do. She can't turn her brain off. She has to do she has to do she has to do uh, and shift back over to her female side. I I. I really really difficult to do just like for an alcoholic or a drug addict man 
really difficult to let go of that addiction. Or... Well, you, you know, unless exactly, unless you pop a, you know, estrogen pill, but you have to generate, regenerate or get the testosterone yeah. down and have the estrogen. And this is where marriage, huh? this is where getting married is such a great thing if you have good communication skills. Because if you have a man who loves you and you know how to motivate him to give you the kind of support that you need to come back to your female side, no man has ever been taught this before. It was never necessary. Women were on their female side. See, the whole history of humanity, women were, the culture was helping women produce the hormones that make babies and helping men produce the hormones they need to make in order to do what it takes to get a woman to love you and make a baby. Okay. Well, and I have I have that conversation with quite a few females and quite a few females look at me like this because I always say I'm feminine, I'm not feminist. And I think a lot of women get themselves into big trouble because they are, you know, they're competing with men, trying to be more manly than men. And, and there are two words that you said that really resonate with me, John. One was trust. Uh, and the other one that came to my mind was threat. So it's exactly the opposite. I feel that a lot of women, when they're in the workplace, wanting to push, of course, onto their careers, being strong, being convincing, convinced about themselves, they're actually threatening to men. It's not about them being brilliant. It's about how they transmit it. And that men, instead of feeling trusted and hence then being more inclusive, potentially inclusive, they feel threatened. So it doesn't work. They don't want to hear or they just don't consider, they don't appreciate, and the equality never comes back. So this whole issue of... Equality doesn't mean sameness. I think there's a key simple phrase. Equality doesn't mean sameness, okay? Inclusiveness doesn't mean that we have to give everybody the same, okay? The metro Exactly. Exactly. This is exactly, exactly what I was trying to say. And I think this is the dance that is so difficult to understand. And if I think about how often I was in a in a boardroom situation and you have a lot of and, and I've always worked in a, you know, in a male domain, be it finance, be it medium, more. Um, it was always that, you know, maybe a woman or myself would come through with an idea and kind of like, okay, it kind of like I my, one voice is it, it passes. And then, you know, two or three minutes later, a male colleague would come with exactly the idea, almost verbatim, and all of a sudden, like, yay, great idea, blah, 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 blah. And, and I'm just thinking, what just happened? And, well, you know, you feel kind reasons, of... That's one of the reasons women don't feel appreciated. That is such a common experience that women have. So what can we do as women in that moment when that happens? Uh, feeling appreciated or not feel, feeling appreciated. First of all, before feeling appreciated, I would like to feel heard. As in, you know, just when I say something, I'm not just here to be blonde and to, you know, just express something and make, make music. Well, what, what you're acknowledging to me is to feel heard, you need to feel that what you said is appreciated. Okay, okay. so that, okay, that's, and again, when women don't feel appreciated, then they feel excluded, they feel unhappy, they have higher stress levels. So we can analyze, there's so many pieces of, where women don't feel appreciated. All right, so I'm going to start with the, one of the things, and I, I address that in my book, the exact same. Every woman says it, even my wife says it. You know, two days later, you always take on my ideas, mine. And, and all you have to do is say to me, yeah, I told you that yesterday, and I think it's a great idea, and I also think we ought to do this and this. Just to so continue us. developing it, basically. Yeah, so. Develop it a little bit more. And so there's, there's two reasons. See, men... In the past, now women are learning soccer more, and that's a good thing, I think, for women to, you know, have the women's sports. I don't think it's a good thing for women to compete with men in sports. <laughs> it's a crazy, another crazy idea, in my opinion. Okay, so, but learning soccer, for example, you learn the rules of the game. And the rules of the game is somebody kicks the ball, you can kick it, you try to get it away from them. So that's competition. That's a rule in the game. You can steal the ball. That's really what you're doing. And what he does is he stole the ball, whether he's aware of it or not. And most of the time, they're not aware of the ball. They get an idea. And what a man does is he puts his spin on it, just a little spin on it. As soon as he puts a spin on it, it's his idea. Or, or even can become his idea. When he heard you say it, it goes in there. He's thinking about other things. Mm -hmm. And then he concludes, I think that's a good idea. And he says it with a level of confidence and authority, yeah. Don't project. 
Yeah. See that there is a place where women are a little, little shy to say, "I got the best idea here," you know. But he comes out, it's like, "Ah, I think we ought to do this." The, that's uh, the art of salesmanship, okay? Which is, I have the best idea. I'm great. I have this, and and whereas a woman, that that's very testosterone producing. A woman's nature, most women, their nature, their female side nature for sure, is to be, "We're part of the team here," and I'm putting my idea out here. Who's going to build on my idea? What's going to happen? And then some guy comes along and says. I got the great idea. This is why I'm, I'm settling the deal. We should do this. And what the woman needs to do first is understand this. Men are just competing to get the best idea. And he expects, he expects, and it's fair play for somebody to steal the ball back. And she doesn't know that. Okay. You know, if she, if she was to go, you took my idea. Well, then it's got, well, what are you, a poor sport? See. <laughs> so she doesn't, exactly. yeah. she doesn't understand. That's part of the, the, the banter that's going on and you just have to come back and you come back with just the same enthusiasm that he had. That is such a great idea. I remember talking to Carol and saying that earlier, you know, if we just did that and I think if we do this with that, it will be amazing. But I've tested this out. It, I love this. I love this, John, because because this is great. This is, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go back with how you originated the idea. See, and, and it could have been you had the idea in the meeting. You know, he says, we ought to do this. And you can say, yeah, you know, when, when Jim was saying this and this, and that's the exact thought I had. And when I shared it, I realized this is the right thing to do. So you're right on track with this. And as I've been listening to you, I think we could actually add a little something to it. See, you can add to it or just come back and say, yes, I heard it from Carol. I thought this and I had this experience in my life. And I realized this is the way to go. We should definitely do do and then say, don't do it. We should definitely do what he recommends. We should definitely didn't put the put use the blue paint, not the red paint. Okay, so you own the moment there. And if you don't do that, men just they assume oh, whoever takes the ball gets it. Uh, yeah. Another example of just more examples of this, which is again, this is all in my book, Mars Venus in the Workplace, a wonderful book, right, right behind me. There, so, I, mean, I love that book. It's just fantastic. Uh, but here's the example uh, of. If you've got a whole team of people working together, and teamwork is really very uh, balancing for females particularly, okay? Teamwork, cooperation, collaboration, that's very estrogen stimulating. When a guy wants to take credit for everything, it's because he needs to make some testosterone. See, this is like, I did this. You can look at a little boy, you know, he's tying his shoes, mom's trying to help him. No, I can do it myself, you know? That's that self-sufficiency, self-reliance, that's a very testosterone-producing thing. And you'll often see men who are so stingy in that way because they have low testosterone. So they're always looking for acknowledgement to build up their testosterone. So how do you help them? You give them lots of praise, good that Mars praise, you know, well, that was a good idea. That makes sense. I like that. I was so helpful you were there. And then bring in your side of it. He will hear you. He sees you. He values you tremendously because of that. So here I'm on a team and in my office, it's mostly women, actually. Uh, it's gotten relationship class, but I got men in there too. We're doing a meeting and the men will start to dominate maybe one of the women whose personality is more masculine. So she's, she's like, we're racing cars, you know, kicking the ball back and forth. And our customer service person is she's more relational oriented, right? So she's like great for the job. You know, she's always validating people, helping them, giving, solving problems in that, in that way. But so her nature is personality is way more feminine than the rest of us. You know, we're all in there. Uh, wanting to get the glory or achieve the goal, get it done. And and she's like listening and she's appreciating, you know, she's on her female. See, whenever you're appreciating somebody, you're on your female side. Okay, that's why you feel so good when somebody performs on the stage and you clap for them, you're appreciating them, you get high. You know, your estrogen levels go up. That's amazing. That's wonderful. And by the way, when you appreciate people on the stage, what is their reaction? They bow to you. Do you realize? See, this they, is when, when they love you exactly. They, they, they love more. you. They love they you back. back. Okay, so so here we are, and we'll give her a name, Carol. And uh, so we're all talking about stuff, and then I find out later that Carol doesn't feel appreciated in the workplace. She doesn't feel acknowledged. She doesn't feel part of the team. She doesn't feel included. She doesn't feel appreciated. She doesn't feel like she has value there. So. I think about this and I realize, well, Carol is more on her female side. So I need to support more of her female side. So we'd have these conversations in the team meeting and she wouldn't say anything. 
because the frequency of the speed of ideas and throwing around and the confidence we had to do this, you know, she doesn't have that confidence right away. And that's a very common trait for women, which is before I have confidence, I want to find consensus. You see, we should all decide. And then that's the right thing. Men, on the other hand, they have confidence in anything they say. Okay. They're just going to put it out there. You can see this in classrooms. Teacher says something, all the boys raise their hand. I have the answer. And Girls are kind of being a little tipping. Now, now it's changing now as women are more on their male side, but it, it's like, I haven't yet thought about this or talked to a lot of people about this. But when women do come to that consensus of we should all do this, they, they're much more firm. Men, on the other hand, can have an idea. And if he hears another idea that's better, quite often, unless he's an insecure man, he'll go, okay, we'll go with that idea or he'll build on that idea. And women don't realize how flexible men can be because we sound so definite and confident because, see, we don't see all the consequences. Women are always looking at, well, if we do this, but what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And what about this? And who am I to say this? Because I haven't done this before. Men don't see all of that. They just go, nobody knows what to do. Well, I have an idea. I'll put it out there. And when you don't have an awareness of consequences, you have much more confidence. See, it's our heart that says, wait, wait a second. If we do this, somebody's going to get cheated. Somebody's going to be hurt. Some land's going to get destroyed, you know? If you're not thinking about all that stuff. Exactly. You don't feel that there's something bad coming. So you just go for it in charge. You don't reevaluate. Yeah, you, you just don't see anything else. I have to share my experience as a man. I'm a very balanced man. I have my female, female side. I work at this and so forth. But I remember watching the Terminator movie. And that was about a robot the whole time through, who was the main big character. And so what's interesting about a lot of men is that if you watch in the movie theater and action movies, the good guy or the bad guy doesn't matter. If they throw a punch, the men are like, yeah, that was a good punch. Or that's, you know, the best villain is a great show for men. Okay. <laughs> so for women, the, the guys are being punched and kicked and knocked down. And guys are like, good punch. Well, knock him down. Well, get back up. You know, and we're on both sides. For a woman, they're like being knocked over. You know? <laughs> yes, yes, they pull back. They pull back. They don't go, yeah. yeah. They like, go, oh, my back. God. Yeah. Yeah. Now, not all women, again, because more women, they're they're more on their male side these days. But on their, if you go and you're more, you've got little children around you and you got more nurturing in your life, you're going to be affected by those things. OK, yeah. so having said that. So here's Carol in the meeting, not saying much. And so I would just say all I had to do a little bit of and what I'll call this is not emotional intelligence. It's gender intelligence and gender intelligence can be mastered much more quickly than emotional intelligence. Okay, so there's two real clear distinctions. Gender intelligence can just change things overnight. Emotional intelligence is a direct, a North Star to go towards and a lot of practices where you learn that you never, you know, I never get depressed. I have absolutely no anxiety in my life. I have forgiveness all the time. I have motivation. I, I stand my ground. Uh, you know, th this is emotional intelligence. But gender intelligence is really under just a, something that we haven't been taught, okay? And, and it can happen, change very quickly because you see it works right away and it changes the world around you. So all I do is say to Carol, well, hold on here. Well, Carol, you've had a lot of experience talking to these people. What do you think about that? And there's this stop, everything stops because she's been listening to everybody. So she didn't have a chance to think about herself. So tell me what you think about this. And she goes, or another one, if she goes, I, I don't know, then you just shift. And I probably should have done this to start with is, well, how do you feel about if we do this? How do you feel about that? And she'll go, oh, we, we I, I think we could do it like this and this and this. I had a person tell me this. She always brings something into the conversation that none of us, a personalities would have, would have thought of. So, so true. Yeah. So the one who's not talking the leader or anybody on the team should notice they're not talking and ask them questions to bring them in. So that's being inclusiveness. But now if a man is not talking in a meeting and he's really more of your masculine man, okay, he's a man. <laughs> he hasn't been totally feminized, but he's a man and he doesn't have anything to say. Let's say it's a group of five men and we're all together and one man is not talking. I have two support groups with men. And if one man's not talking, Nobody in, wants to embarrass him by saying, well, what do you think? Because if he's not talking, he doesn't have any had opinion. Okay? He's in the nothing talk. box. He's Literally. in the nothing box. Exactly. He's a, so don't embarrass him like, I don't have anything to say. We, we, we have no sensitivity to the man who doesn't have anything to say. We just well, assume. Let, let me challenge you on that one, because I think this is super interesting. 
Uh, I remember when we spoke, and I think you mentioned it also in your book, John, is never ask uh, a man, how do you feel or what do you feel about something? But ask him, what do you think or how do you think this is going to work? So uh, my my challenge here is um, because I work with men, I'm in a, in a partnership where the, you know, the operational partners are all men. I'm the only female. I would I would go about it this way. So I would just use what you taught me just now saying, hey, would that make sense? Not even to you, but I would try to include whatever other people thought, said, put on the table. I would just like, would that make sense? You know, and then address that person. And I, it, is that a way? I mean, that is not out of my gut. You're, speak, you're speaking his language when you say, when you use that makes sense. It's Pure mas masculine is logical, feminine is emotional. Now, for those that don't hear the bigger picture, I'm not saying that men aren't emotional. I'm not saying that women are not logical, but I'm saying that there's emotions. And if you're only emotions, they're not logical. And if you're only logical, they're not emotional. So there is this caveat where there are <clears throat> sociopathic or even psychopathic people, primarily men. If you look at murderers, they're primarily men, unless it's in a big dangerous thing and the women will kill too. But for men, they don't, the, these are psychopath murderers. I'm not happy to talk about this, but we should do it. Their testosterone levels are very high and their, their, their uh, estrogen levels are very, very low. No empathy. So no, no ester, no empathy. So that, that creates another kind of aggression, which is not emotional. It's, You know, I remember one hearing a case of a, a a man who was very, very angry with his wife and and they put him in a hospital and they chained him down. He was like, I'm going to kill her. I'm going to kill her and kill her. And then they gave him all these medications. And then suddenly he just said, oh, I'm not angry anymore. And he was just happy as could be. And they all thought, oh, he's been cured. And then he went and killed his wife uh, because basically anger is still resisting a situation. He finally decided I am going to do it. And then he started calculating. That's just no emotion at all and pure testosterone. I'm going to solve this problem, but I don't care about anything. And he's got the strategy of pretending that he is not oh, sick. Yes, and yes, then yes, he yes, goes on. Tell anybody, I, I got my plan. I'm going to do it. So we, the people who, uh, you know, have heartfelt feelings, we have estrogen in our bodies. We don't tend to become the rulers of the planet. Yeah. Just to know that the rulers of the planet are primarily uh, psychopaths. Anybody who starts a war is a psychopath. Uh, dot, they don't take dot, dot. I'm into that. <laughs> they, are, they are. I wish we could measure their hormones uh, when they're in their meetings. Uh, it, because basically the, the, the level of estrogen compared to their testosterone levels is nil. Okay. They're just, there's no empathy at all. There's, they've been wounded maybe five generations back, you know, they're born that way. And that's what, you know, a, I'm not an expert on the people of the lie, but there's books written of this and how it's suspected that one out of 10 people is somewhat of a, a psychopath, um, which means they're the people who commit crimes all the time. They have no conscience. I've, I've talked with these, these people in the San Quentin to murderers, mm. uh, low level murderers. I haven't dealt with the high level murderers, <laughs> but They're, they're, the, ruling, the ruling class is almost always a uh, psychopath and they behave normally. Uh, they can, they fake it all. They don't feel anything, but they can fake it. You know, there's a, a great show on TV that did an analysis of this called Dexter. Uh, Dexter was a psychopath. He got pleasure out of killing people. See, we get pleasure out of helping people. Some people get pleasure out of hurting people. And we can all, we can kind of relate to it in a little way. I can't, I had to find a way to relate because I relate to everything and everyone. That makes me a heartfelt person. So if you look at some, back in the, what was it? The uh, 70s, there was a formula in action movies. And the formula in action movies was uh, a good guy, his wife, his children, all, they all get murdered, but the good guy somehow didn't die. Okay, mm -hmm. the bad guy come in and kill them. So now there's a bad guy and there's a good guy. And the bad guy continues to do bad things, more and more bad things, as the good guy goes into training and figures out how to kill the bad guy. And it's been building up. The bad guy does so many bad things that when the good guy finally kills, murders, okay, kills the bad guy, we all rejoice. Okay, that's a that's a push to the limit and a fantasy you get to experience. People have so much hate inside of them, so much lack of love inside of them that they feel good when other people suffer. Well, maybe Not that helps. touches on that survival instinct that really when we feel so threatened that that we are actually 
you know, able yes, yes, to kill. I, I but we have to be them. there. Yeah. yeah but I it's not the pleasure. Survive. It's not yeah. out of pleasure. It's out of need. And, for... and, and when somebody, when, when somebody does not feel to experience somebody else's pain, uh, gives them a glimpse of their own pain and there's a release. So we really gotten into emotional intelligence here for a moment, but empathy is if you're in pain and I feel that pain, you will feel better. Okay, so sure. think about that. Yep. As is you, this is what healing takes place. I'm also a healer. And, 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 and I, I apply that into our gender intelligence, which is, and I'm going to go there rather than deal with all the prisoners. Okay, and gender intelligence and, and the workplace are at home. What women need most, okay, men need the trust, the acceptance, the appreciation. If you've got it, you know, just to know, if you muster it up, summon it up to find a way to communicate <laughs> just rather tell. than ignore it. Okay, that, that's what opens men up. What opens women up is messages that say, I care about you. I prioritize. You're important to me. Okay, it's like the banks came to me back in the 90s. We want to promote women have all the money now. So let's get women into the banks and tell them how to use their money and everything. So it, suddenly they looked at my book and they just saw caring, understanding, and respect. Okay. We have personal banking here. We care. We understand what you're going through. We have a team of people that will here work with you. You well, know, this but is men how you buy a money. woman. Of course. This is how you buy a woman. That's yeah. how they brought in the women. It was right from the book Men Are from Mars. The primary needs the women. Now in my later books, I understand those behaviors that raise estrogen in women, that's what builds women can trust you, which you want to always have the women trusting you. You're the good guy. You're the one they want to go to. You're the one they can believe in. You're the one they want to recommend. They're the one that they're your raving fans. If you're, you know, an author or teacher, or whatever, <laughs> you know, you want fans out there. This is the best. I love this product. I love this person. How do you do that? That's estrogen goes up because you are respectful of her. You are understanding. I'll go the other or order. You care about her. She's a priority. It says a personal relationship based upon understanding your needs. I need to hear what your needs are to understand them because you're unique. I care about you. And I respect that based upon my caring and my understanding. You're a priority and I respect your wishes, your needs. We are here for you. You give that message and women go, oh, I feel safe. I feel safe. And then the oxytocin goes up, allows the estrogen to go higher. And you're the person they can now trust and accept, you know, somebody can say, oh, but they did this and this and this, but that's okay. They did this, which is I want. <laughs> and, and they will then appreciate, they will appreciate you more. So coming back to women not feeling appreciated, let me tell a little story there, because it was the first awareness of gender differences for me. And it was in the workplace. I, you know, not that I was, I was a big businessman or whatever, but I had a, a counseling, uh, counseling eight women with seven women a day okay or six women a day okay I, I worked i was workaholic in the beginning to afford being married and children and all that so i was in there working six women a day mostly women came to me i later found out that 90 percent of the people who go for therapy are women why because if you can talk estrogen goes up <laughs> you feel safe yeah. it's not that men you know what's wrong with men they don't go to therapy they don't need it like women need they what they do need though is coaching and education and now coaching has increase so you got women and men getting coaching but primarily therapy and marriage counseling is most motivated primarily by it's women the women it's the women yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so here we are so she so i've got this thriving business i mean i was sold out i had waiting lists because primarily you know i was i was a good listener i learned how to listen ask questions in the last 10 minutes i'd give advice never gave advice until i listened for 40 minutes uh my i'm such a good listener now emotional intelligence I listen to women for 30 minutes. I process their emotions. They feel totally validated. And then I tell them everything they're doing wrong. Because <laughs> you can't change your life unless you realize I'm doing something wrong. But they're not wrong. I validate who they are. If they feel loved and supported, heard and understood. Respected. And they're open They're open then to, to your recommendation. To recognizing what can I do differently. Hmm. But until she feels heard, I'm doing everything they possibly can. And don't tell me that's wrong because it comes from the best I have. So you first give them what they need, then you give them the other side of what they need, their male side, which is the strategy to make things better. You have to look at both sides. So I have a little bit of pet peeve with most therapists who just listen to women, and then they feel better because if you talk, you feel better, estrogen goes up, but usually they're just complaining. They're not strategizing at all, and the problems still exist in their life, and they come back to the therapist in order to talk about their feelings and feel better, but go back to a life where nothing has changed. So I'm into changing the world, but only after you change yourself. 
and, and learning how to process your emotions and then teaching them gender intelligence, which is you know, basically what they need in order to balance their hormones, strategies to make their own estrogen without depending on a man. And then if you've got a man, how to use him to stimulate estrogen. See, this is all new knowledge. This is gender intelligence. So that's easily taught. So back, I was learning this. I'm going to just give that seed story here. So Helen, who was my assistant, and she ran the business, okay? So I'm sitting in an office all day. I know nothing. I teach workshops on the weekends. She enrolls people. She takes the money. She pays my bills. She gets everybody. She does everything, okay? She's a dream. I never have a complaint. I, I, I basically, she handles it all. So, and I handle my side. She does hers. Okay, now... After about three years, she came to me and she says, you know, I think I'm ready to move on. I said, why? You know, and and she said, and I'd recently given a race. She made basically almost as much as I made. Okay. So that, it was like a, a really <laughs> well, good She's running off of the office. <laughs> she was amazing. You know, it was like a partnership. And so anyway, so Helen is doing this. And she said, I just, I, I feel like it's time for me to move on. I said, well, tell, I said, help me understand that better. Tell me more. And and she basically said, well, I just don't feel appreciated. <gasps> and of course, my well, experience, you? I, have, oh. I have the dream partner. I, how could I, she not feel appreciated? Fortunately, I had enough skills in listening not to react that way. I just said, well, I, tell me more. Okay. That's what I do as a therapist. Tell me more. Help me understand that better. And <laughs> what else? Okay. So tell me more. And she said, I don't know. She, she, just, she wasn't clear about it. She, I don't know. You don't even know what I do. You know, you don't even know what's going on in the office. And and in my mind, inside, I didn't say this. That's why I appreciate you so much. So if I tell her, no, I do appreciate you, that's just an argument. That's just making her wrong. So I heard her out and I said, well, what would it look like if you were working for somebody and you felt appreciated? And she said, well, they know what I do. They know the challenges I go through. And sometimes I work really hard and they'd ask me about whatever. I said, okay, well, I wasn't aware of that. Help me stay two more weeks. Let's see if I can become a better person to work with. And she said, okay, I can stay two weeks. Well, she stayed for another six years until she Fantastic. got a very lucrative job after that. Fantastic. Uh, and and let me interject you there. All I did, all I did was take an extra five minutes to yeah. know what she does, to ask her questions. And that way she could say, you know, those people, they didn't do this. They said they're going to do this. Oh my God, that client, she comes in every time she does it. A little bit of complaining, that's all. A little sharing and just my knowing what she did, what she goes through was enough to make her just... No, just... I I love that story, John, because it resonates very strongly with me where I, I am the, the female boss. And when, when I appreciate the person that works for me, I notice that and I do know what she does that she feels appreciated when I not only see something, but I ask her then, how did you do that? I could never do it that way. Can you, can you show me? And I just see how her eyes go up and she says, yeah, of course I show you. Look, I did this and that and the other because I go really granular having her explain. And I am interested. So this is not a strategy, but I just see the shift and hey, this is great. Well done. Thank you so much. Which is kind of like a given maybe from woman to woman, but that I then ask, for the how did you do it? This is amazing. I could never do it. I love it. I love it. I didn't even have that awareness. I'm taking that away. I wrote it down. Because it oh, gives her an opportunity. Let me it. Let me it. No, honestly. It gives her an opportunity to go through the whole process. And, and then she'll tell you a story how she did it. It's not just, you know, I, I turned this switch to A to B. No, 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 no. No, no, exactly. Absolutely right. Absolutely you know, right. I, I have a female side. And, you know, I know my male side, female side, but there's a, a part of me when when people ask how did you do that even i do it right here in our conversation when i give you a point usually i tell you how i came about that see yeah. that's engaging my female side while i'm also giving my point it's that this is an integrated presentation so i address men and women they both feel supported and that is so good let me let me just interject there because that is a really important point how to address men and women at the same time and circling back to the work in environment if we may john because I, I one of the main questions i also ask my community hey what you what would you ask john about this and the thing is okay i'm the new boss of a team it's a mixed team maybe predominantly men but they're also women and i'm a female i might be a young female i have my credentials otherwise i wouldn't get the job now how on earth do I start my very first speech to them, my presentation, my making the mark, my showing without showing off um, who I am or who I want to be for them? 
So how do I get out of my ma male team members that work for me? You know, the, okay, guys, I need your help. I need to conquer for me. And at the same time, girls, I need your help. Please nurture me. How do I get that? How do I assert myself as a new boss, he would say? Well, well you said a few things that would I would bounce off on. One is, uh, I don't want to brag too much. You win men over when you brag. You lose women when you brag too much. So it, it's finding the balance. It's reading your audience. And so... If you want to validate, validation is a real key thing of, you know, uh, I've seen, uh, I, I don't know exactly the business we're talking about, but I, I, I give you the concepts or I tell you how I do it in the audience. I'll first always validate the challenges that people go through. I'm talking to the women there. Okay. Men don't care that much. You challenge maybe the weak men, insecure men. Oh yes, it's a hard job, but most men are not into like, you're not scoring points with men when you're, when you're validating that. There's challenges that we've been going through. And now based on my credentials, now you come back to your male side, you know, I've done this and I got this. And so I got this award. Or, and so that's how I got this job. And I think that, you know, my strategies, what we'll start to do is we'll be able to make some changes here. We'll be able to do this and we'll be able to do this. And because I understand this is a difficult situation. You sort of go to the challenging part in a sense, the optimistic side and some of the it's a rough road to take, you know, there's a hard thing to do. And you talk to both sides of people. And so you're always aware that you, you want to make, uh, uh, there's, a, there's an optimism, okay? There's an optimism always speaks to the male side, okay? Men always want to be, we can do this, you can accomplish this, hard work, we'll get through it. Men like that, you know, I want to give an example. Uh, they want to do a polar exploration at one point, and this is back in the 20s or something, North Pole exploration. They said, this is not for wimpy people. This is not for this. this is the hardest thing you can ever do. It's the most difficult thing. And, and the people were saying, why are you saying this? Nobody's going to do this. But they just based on like the worst possible thing to be the first person to the North Pole. And they just got all these men. <laughs> they were a huge response from it. Okay. I'll be the one. So there's a challenge to this. There's uh, uh, the goal, you want to talk about goals, you know, I think we have some really possible goals here we can set and we'll be working on that together. Now you're talking to the women. So there's this, to know the buzzwords for which women are seeking cooperation, they're seeking validation. And validation is different what everybody thinks. Validation is an empathy and understanding for challenges are difficult. Things are difficult. This is hard. And what we can accomplish together is great. We can do this. We get this goal. So I'm sort of generalizing because it could be every talk is completely different. So as a theme. No, but I, but I like that. Yeah, no, I like that. But because it's a strategic communication you have to be aware of. So yeah. with your chosen, well-curated words, you know exactly what's going to be decoded by who? Males and females, right? That's right. You want to always take in consideration you're reading your audience with gender intelligence. You're, you're reading your group uh, with gender intelligence and you're you're making eye contact with women. Uh, not so much to make eye contact with men. That's not an important thing. Don't take it personally if men are looking at their desk. Usually if men are thinking about something, they look away. It doesn't mean they're not thinking about you. It's, and this is another gender thing in the workplace. That, you know, assistant comes in my office. I'm still looking at the computer. I say, what is it? And I continue looking at the computer. Well, a woman is offended by that. Well, what? Is this more important than me? Not all women are offended, but that's, if you don't understand, he's focused on this. And what's going to happen is he's got another brain that's sort of listening halfway to what you're saying to determine, is this more important than this? Okay, so it's uh, that's a joke. I'll just say it, but my wife did this. She said, uh, I was, you know, in the first few years of her marriage, I didn't have all this stuff down. And, and she was talking and she realized my mind went back to work. Men's mind will go back to work because work produces more testosterone than the estrogen produced by listening to her. So, so my mind has disappeared. And so then she says, yeah, and the, you know, the postman, he's been coming every day now. We've been having sit-down conversations. I said, what? <laughs> Just to provoke you, exactly. All right, all right. No, that, it does work. But you know, what comes to my mind is Vanessa Von Edward, uh, Ed, Edwards, and she wrote two books, Captivate and Cues, and she also is the founder of Science of People. I don't know if you've heard about her, but she basically looks uh, a lot 
uh, body language, but also how you speak, uh, what you say and how you say it, where you look, why you're talking, which I thought was interesting when she said, okay, highly likable people in general, whatever the context, work, private, friend, it doesn't matter, is a fair balance between competence and warmth. And whilst you were explaining to me how you would address, let's say, your mixed audience as a new female boss is, you know, the competence, competence, of course, is something that women go like, hey, she must be good. Perhaps they discount it. But men want to see that competence, competence. And then women might be more, you know, taken in by the warmth that, you know, I'm still a woman and I, I include, et cetera, et cetera. And to have that kind of balance opens the audience. You, that's brilliant. I love what she said. And I love what you just said. It's absolutely amazing. And what I'll look at is you can say everything right. You can have the body posture right. I'm a, I'm in the belief it's all tone of voice. Yeah. Tone of voice reveals are you warm and are you competent? It's all tone of voice. And, it, and, and, and tone of voice cannot be manipulated. That's why I say this is about if who you are is coming from a place of competence and warmth. You will win out your audience, your your group. I mean, you're you're talking to them, and I just say that over and over. Communication skills are really good, and you can have the the balance inside yourself. And usually, it doesn't even matter what your communication skills are, really, but they can help because nobody's ever perfectly in balance. And you know, we have our stress things, and the, mm-hmm. you know, the styles of communication can help us to uh, bring what's good over here, over there. So that's all helpful. But to me, the real key is. Again, it's gender intelligence here is is recognizing that women have the challenge of finding their warmth when they're in that male environment. And men have the challenge in that male environment to find their warmth with the support the women who are in that place. That's it. And it's a lot of the actions that you do, the things you say that will make a big difference. You know, I remember, you know, all of the over the years going to workplaces. There's always somebody that the women think he's so amazing. You know, he's just so great. You can always go to him and he understands. That was a phrase I heard over and over and over. And so it's, I liked what you said as well, when you're demonstrating your confidence in front of a group of men who don't know you, they are thinking back, well, we'll see. Uh, You know, here I am, I'm a very open-minded person, but it's sort of this confession of my transformation into appreciating women, respecting women more and so forth. I grew up in Texas. I love my mother. I saw my mother. She didn't have a job. She's raising children all the time. I didn't know she could go out there and run a company. Mm-hmm. So, so see that that's where we have the collective consciousness is shifting here. And, and girls didn't know that they go out and run a company. Now we know women can run out. And run, they can do it better than men. Okay, I, I don't say they're amazing. They're such hard workers and so forth. Their challenge is being so competent and capable how to balance that with their uh, female side and how to be happy and fulfilled and not strident. Okay. And not, not re- see strident is rejecting my nurturing side. A man can be quite assertive and he's not rejecting his female side because he doesn't have a big, strong female side. So that's back to the thing is what, you know, why, you know, men can be a-holes and nobody has a problem with it. Well, actually I do have a problem with it. Yeah. Uh, many men do, but they can get away with it way more than a woman because at least they're sort of they're not rejecting love. They just don't have the love. Mm. Whereas for women, they're to be on their male side, they're rejecting their female side. So yeah, it's, it's an expectation thing as well. Yes, no, 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 absolutely. And I love the way, as you say, you know, you need to kind of balance it, especially as a woman uh, in, a, in a male environment that you still can show and have the confidence even to show your female side because that actually kind of embraces the men around you. And I have a very good uh, example. Uh, and that is my husband is absolutely in awe with Angela Merkel, the former um, German prime minister. Uh, Various times he had the chance to meet her because of his uh, previous job. And he always refers back to this one incident where they um, went to her office and she was the one serving tea. So she was really not the chancellor, you know, the strong woman, 16 years leading uh, uh, Europe's first economy for many, many years, uh, being strong on all fronts. But there she is. And then she sits down and she said, OK, can I serve you tea? And how would you like it? Would you like it with sugar, with milk and whatever? And he was like, oh, all right, I have no chance against Angela Merkel. That's basically That's right. That's right. I mean, basically, men are so hungry for feminine energy. 
Yeah. And women are so hungry for masculine energy. It, it, men just don't know their power and women don't know their power. And a subtle a way of summarizing power, it, which I think is helpful for people, again, just to have know you're working with these two forces. Masculine power is look what I can do. Feminine power is look what I can get other people to do for me. No, <laughs> true. So. That is so, so true. And I think this is, this is lovely because before we were talking about help, right? And you were saying that men only do what they need to do, but not more. And that women are different. They kind of try to, to look for somehow to facilitate. So I was thinking about the concept of helping. And I think we all want to help as human beings. You know, we have to help each other just to evolve as a species. But the help of a man potentially, and that's a question, John, equates more to provide, whereas the help from a woman equates more to nurture. Yes, it's, yes. It, Warmth. It's both help. Warmth. Warmth. Absolutely. That's and I don't I guess I never finished that part on uh men and their efficiency gene, which is never do anything they don't have to do. In the workplace, if women take over things, men just sit back. They they really they think, well she's gonna do it, I'll do something else. And women wonder why he's not doing more. Uh, and so there's an art for women not to eagerly eat women. I'll do it. You know, she's the first, you know, I'm on stage and I, I sneeze. Women's up, up there giving me a Kleenex. OK, that's fine if it's your child, not fine in the workplace yeah. where you can't be overly eager to do more. You got to hold back a little bit. Otherwise, men will take advantage of you, not knowing they're taking advantage of you because you're eagerly taking on things. And you wonder, why isn't he eagerly taking on things? Well, he just assumes, well, you want to do it because he doesn't do anything unless he wants to do it and feels he has to do it. But then again, it's really, really bad for men because you kind of castrate them because unless they get a challenge and they can do it, their That's testosterone right. doesn't go up. I mean, they are out That's of right. castrating, right? right? See, men, men need a fire. Yeah, exactly. Men need a fire to motivate them. And if you're putting out all the fires, they're going to, in a sense, they're going to sit there and wait for the emergency. They're waiting for the emergency. <laughs> it's like a stress so woman. They don't have the, see, women have this automatic, get get out and do it, get out and do it, get out and do it. Men don't have that. It's like we need, there's got to be a reward out there. Like if somebody offered me $3 million, I'd sit down and write a book, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, I've written enough, okay? Yeah. So I, there has to be the, 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 the carrot out there. The carrot is a big key thing for men. Now, for women, it's there somewhat. But for men, it's the major factor. It's a, all right, I'll do that if the reward is big enough. And of course, if it's a fire, there's always a big reward. People make you a hero. You put out a fire. So men are always looking for, what is it I can do that nobody else can do? If they can do it, why should I bother? So there's a dynamic there. So how do you work with that in a team of men and women, our workplace together, is the art of asking men to do things. Now, there's a whole, you know, we've gone way over time here. We have gone way <laughs> over time. <laughs> no, I, I do. I'm going to finish on my side. I have to finish kind of another interview. Me too, but the, me too. <laughs> okay. But the art of asking for men, there's a whole art to this. Now I'm feeling rushed by the time how I want to do it. Um, Not to worry. It's learning. That's if you fine. don't, if you, okay, I can tell you a story around it and then finish with the point. Uh, Bonnie, oh, it's the grumbles. That's what I have to talk. That's in my dating book, by the way. But it's mm -hmm. it's about understanding men and their grumbles, asking men to do stuff. Because see, women on dates, the mistake they make is they give more than they're getting. They're trying to win the man over, and it's his job to win her over. And so, but if you ask a man to do something, many times he grumbles, and women can anticipate that grumble, and they take it as rejection and don't ask. Because see, that field of energy around a man is, I don't want to do anything unless I have to do it. So when you ask him to do something, he has his resistance, which is, is this really that important? So just the way he reacts to, is it really that important? Is a grumble, kind of like a dog barking, but his tail's still wagging. And women don't understand that because when a woman grumbles, there's no tail wagging. If you try to ask a woman to do something, she didn't want to do it. Uh, that grumble is she's going to be thinking inside, why well, do this and this and this and you don't do that, that he's that's not the mechanisms going on in his brain when he grumbles is think of it like opening a door that has squeaky hinges. Mm -hmm. It's still open opening. Door, it's going to make squeaky hinges until you oil them and the way you oil them is, is with gentle persistence. So he grumbles. And here's another example where I learned it. I. I'm working so hard, I'm tired, I come home, I'm watching the news, I'm going to bed, my wife sees me moving. She follows me up to the bedroom 
And she says, oh, John, uh, would you go to the 7-Eleven? Would you go to the store and get some milk? Okay, now I'm going to bed. And she wants me to get milk. Now, rightly so. She's asked me twice to do it. And I said, I haven't, I've forgotten to do it, forgot to do it. Oh, would you go to the store and get some milk? And I went, oh, yeah. And I'm thinking, I forgot to do that. I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. That's always what men think. So and then I'm like sitting down in the bed. I said, oh, I'm really tired. I really don't want to do it today. I'll do it tomorrow. So that's his grumbles. Now, Bonnie understood. She's like a master of men, getting them to be the best self. She sat there and she says, yeah, you're so tired. You work so hard. I get it. Just pause. And then she goes, it would just be so nice. Yeah, you'd Love be it. my hero. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't that big. It would just be so nice. I'd really love it. And then sat with it. I went, yeah, I'll be sure to do it tomorrow. I promise you I'll do it tomorrow. And she says, that would be really great. And then she just sat with it. But it would be so nice if you got it tonight, because then I could give it to the kids in the morning. See, she just persisted in a non-demanding way. And she, she did not get upset. Demanding, she, upset. She, mm -mm. Yeah. yeah, she didn't give up and she didn't get upset because when, when women sense those grumbles, they're already thinking, oh, I do so much more than him or he doesn't do for me. Just know that men have a resistance to change once they're on their way. And if something more, is it really necessary? And so the grumble is kind of like I unconsciously, this better be important. So when I get back, you better give me a smile. OK, I, I better get a reward for this. OK, so there's a lot of subtleties there. But the main thing here is that. Women usually don't ask men for support because they can sense he's already focused. He's going to grumble. They've experienced it before. Or when he does grumble, then she immediately goes, OK, I'll do it myself. Mm -hmm. Or she argues, well, why, why aren't you doing it? I've done this and this and this, and you're not doing that. That just doesn't work. All this resistance stuff doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But the art of femininity is just don't resist. Consider, well, that makes sense. I can see why you're so tired. And she didn't bring up that I've asked you already twice before. See, that's a shaming message. That's a putting down message. And in her mind, she may not be thinking she's doing that, but it is. Or maybe she's trying to gain leverage to get what she wants. But you don't have to. This is a co-worker. This is somebody who's working with you. You say, oh, it'd be really nice if you did this. And, and you're not trying to butter it up even. Okay, it's just like, oh, would you help me with this? And he goes, oh, I'm really busy with that. He goes, oh, yeah, what are you doing? And uh, well, that makes sense. It would be really nice. It'll only take a few minutes. Just a little little nudge, just a little nudge. So he feels something he'd never felt before, which is a woman being nice to him when he grumbled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love Gently it. Yeah. persisted because yeah. she didn't interpret the grumbles correctly. That's all it is. So this is where we understand this is gender intelligence, learning to correctly interpret our differences when they show up. And if they don't show up, we're like each other, no problem. But many times there, problems are there generally because we're not understanding the other person and we don't know how a way to communicate to provide the support that they need and vice versa. So this is amazing. We did beautiful, an hour and a half together. Beautiful, <laughs> absolutely hour and a half and we could do another one. Uh, well, it's basically the question about encoding and decoding, whatever the context today, we focus a little that. bit more on men uh, and women, Mars and Venus at the workplace. John, you'll be back on Mentor TV. Thank you so much for your time. Go run to your next meeting and okay. I'll go. We'll talk, and about gen we'll talk about uh, emotional intelligence next time, which is managing stress without even worrying about gender. Okay, okay. We'll, do that. we'll email okay. some details and then you give me the right stuff to read and we'll delve, delve okay. into it, John. Thank you so right. much. Thank you. Stay Patricia. safe. Thank you Bye -bye. so much. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. And thank you, my dear Mentory TV community, for having joined me yet again for an amazing conversation with this amazing man, Dr. John Gray. That's the book we talked about last time. I couldn't get hold of the other one, Mars, Venus in the workplace, simply because they don't ship to Switzerland or Germany at this moment. I guess it's sold out and it should be. But um, I promise you, I'll bring you back, John Gray, Dr. John Gray. So make sure to stay with us. Stay curious. See you soon. Bye.